Good evening. I'm Neil Ward from the Department of Justice, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to your citizenship celebration. Falcher Moore Rove Galer and Shoanocht. Tonight is all about you, our newest Irish citizens. So, firstly, let me say congratulations to you all. The fear of us are Kogarjikas Goal live. While unfortunately we can't gather in person today, it's great to see so many faces smiling virtually on the screen behind me. I also want to welcome all of those watching via our social media channels, which I know includes members of your families from all across the world. If they would like to post messages of congratulations, they can do that using the hashtag IrishCitizen2021. Kermidge Falcherov, Hakdarakti, Asgelga Komai. This evening, you will be welcomed by Minister for Justice, Heather Humphreys, and Minister of State, James Brown. You will also have the opportunity to recite the Declaration of Fidelity to Our Nation and Loyalty to Our State, with the assistance of Mr. Justice Brian McMahon. And we have some lovely new videos which you have shared with us. But now, in what has been a long-standing tradition with citizenship ceremonies, here is the Garda Band to kick us off. Thank you to the Garda Band for that. It really wouldn't be a citizenship celebration without them. I would now like to introduce our Minister for Justice, Heather Humphreys, 
who is joining us from a digital hub on Valencia Island off the coast of Kerry, no less. Thank you, Neil, and August Fauci Roll Golair. Greetings from the beautiful Valencia Island off the coast of Kerry. And I'm delighted to be joined uh, here this evening in person by Pastor John Herrick, one of our newest Irish citizens. This morning, I attended the cabinet meeting remotely from Bear Island off the coast of Cork. And tonight, I'm addressing you uh, all from a high-speed broadband hub here in Valencia Island. And of course, this is about using new technologies to connect people and empower communities. And uh, just in case you are wondering, there are two uh, very pioneering men behind me in terms of technology. To my right here is uh, Cyrus W. Fields, and to my left is uh, Sir Peter Fitzgerald, the Knight of Kerry. And both of these men were instrumental in laying the transatlantic cable from Valencia Island to Newfoundland. And on this very day, 155 years ago, it went live and changed the world of communications forever. Can I just say it's wonderful to see so many of you on screen this evening. In different times, uh, we would all be just a short distance away in the INEC in Killarney, preparing to take the final steps in, in making you Ireland's newest citizens. Tonight, we have had to do things uh, in a different way, but it's no less meaningful, and the end result is the same. You are Ireland's newest citizens, and we are very proud of you. So, what does it mean to be Irish? Well, that's very personal, personal to each of us. And as Neil said earlier, we'll be hearing on, later on from some of our newest citizens about what it means to them. For me, it's a sense of belonging, of community and kinship. Something that I think we in Ireland do as well if not better than anywhere else in the world. It's following the highs and the lows of your county in the championships, hoping this might be your year for a day out in Crow Park. It's having a national obsession with the weather and drinking tea. And it's the little things, like the team in the airport saying, welcome home when you arrive back from your holidays. And I know that for many of you, the road to Irish citizenship has been a long one. Thank you for sticking with us. Since we opened the temporary statutory declaration process in January, more than 4,400 new citizens have received their certificate of naturalization and over 2,000 more applicants have been given the opportunity to do so. It's not easy to set up a new process in the middle of a pandemic, so I want to thank the citizenship team in my own department for their dedication and their hard work in making all of this possible. Becoming an Irish citizen is a special moment in your lives, and I'm delighted that your friends and families are tuning in from all around the world to witness it. Why don't you please just give them all a wave now? I'm delighted that the presiding officer from our ceremonies, Judge Brian McMahon, is here with us this evening. You have already heard a first musical performance from the Garda Band, and the good news is there's more to follow. And we have a special performance from one of our new citizens who will be sharing their unique musical talent with us. So this evening really is a mix of traditional and new. You could say the same about Ireland itself. We are proud of our heritage and traditions, our poetry and our songs, but we also embrace the new. We are a modern, progressive, an inclusive society with a place 
and a welcome for everyone. The international Irish community spans all corners of the globe with citizens from more than 180 countries. Like those before you, you bring your culture, your history and traditions from your homeland with you. And Ireland is the richer for it. As the old Irish proverb says, Ni cart go cur le kill. There is no strength without unity. So, on behalf of all your fellow citizens, I congratulate you warmly and thank you for making Ireland the home of your heart and future. So, I'd just like you to enjoy the rest of the evening and I'm going to say goodbye. Uh, but uh, before I, we leave you, I'm going to ask uh, Pastor John to come and wave. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Minister Humphreys, for your warm words, and indeed to, to Pastor Herrick for joining the Minister on Valencia Island this evening. It's now time for our first contribution from you, our newest citizens. Rasha al Kazmi is originally from Homs in Syria, but now lives in Cork with her brother Imad and their parents. They arrived in Ireland in May 2015 and stayed in Dublin for the first nine months before moving to Cork. Apparently, Rasha knew her English was good, but when she heard the Cork accent for the first time, she couldn't understand it. I feel her pain. Here's Rasha's story. Hi, I am Rasha. I am originally from Syria. I am now a citizen of Ireland. My life overall was really quiet. I had, a, I had an easy life. Uh, I was living in homes um, with my family. We are a very small family. Um, just my parents, myself, and my brother. My dad was a lecturer uh, at university there in, uh, in Syria. He had a great impact on me, so that's why I, um, I went to university to study Arabic literature and human sciences. It was kind of a very quiet life and nothing new. And then my life was all changed. Unfortunately, I had to, to quit my education uh, from the second year and escape from the war. We took whatever clothes we could, we could take and then we escaped, just like this, you know. So I could say this is, uh, this is the main reason uh, to leave Syria. It's the war, the conflicts, and the, the life there wasn't, uh, wasn't really safe. We got the, the opportunity to travel to Lebanon. We stayed there for, uh, for two years. Um, I had to complete my education there. I was so lucky I went to the Lebanese University, uh, but like the real beginning was here in Ireland. Before I come to Ireland, I really had a, a very good background about Ireland as a, as a culture and uh, as people. Everything wa that my dad was telling me about, uh, which is the people kindness, their simplicity, their warmness, so I had a really very nice imagination in my head about Ireland. For me as a girl, I raised in a really nice family and they'd be always uh, helping me out and supporting me with, with all my life issues. But like, um, since I came to Ireland, I was always uh, hear from people that women has all the power here. So uh, to me, it was great. Uh, and sure, I feel that uh, more opportunities will be open for me as a, as a girl. I do feel like uh, I'm an Irish, uh, I, especially when I hang out with my friends. Uh, I would sometimes uh, say the crack. I, I sometimes do the Cork accent, which is so funny and so lovely to me. Ireland always, always treats uh, the immigrants as Irish citizens, but like uh, this feeling wasn't complete uh, until I got my, my Irish citizenship. Irish citizenship means a new life, a newborn, and a new start. Thank you to Russia for sharing her story with us tonight. I would now like to introduce Minister of State with special responsibility for law reform, youth justice and immigration, James Brown TD. Thanks to Russia for that beautiful video. It's great to see how much it means to her and her family to have found a new life in safety in Ireland and now to have become an Irish citizen. 
my congratulations to Russia and to each and every one of you. As Minister Humphrey said, it's wonderful to see so many of you here this evening and to be able to celebrate with you in this very special way. As some of you may know, this is the decade of centenaries in Ireland, 100 years since the birth of our state. And throughout our history, Irish people have left these shores to make their homes elsewhere for a multitude of reasons. To escape famine or recession, to pursue a job or a course of study, or sometimes just to fall in love. So we understand the life of an immigrant. In fact, it's been said that we are a nation of immigrants. It's ingrained in our DNA. It lives in the stories that we pass down through our own families, of uncles, siblings, or cousins who took the boat or left to find work. More recently, people from around the world have arrived here to make Ireland their new home. Their reasons for doing so differ from person to person. Some are looking for a safe haven. Others wish to live in an inclusive and progressive society. And for many, their motivation is simply to find a safe and secure place to put down roots and raise their family. We welcome them all. In my own family, my uncle Mamou Bessa and his friend Mohamed Shigara came to Ireland from Algeria in the 1970s. They settled in Ireland, became Irish citizens and made a good life for themselves and their families, proud of both their Irish and Algerian identities. Sadly, Mohammed passed away earlier this year, and my thoughts are with his family. They brought with them their Algerian heritage and culture. That blending of cultures and exposure to different experiences made a strong impression on me growing up, and has helped to shape who I am today and my belief in the value that new citizens bring to Ireland. Minister Humphrey said it well earlier, we are richer for it. It is now part of the fabric of our society and part of what makes us uniquely Irish. All Irish citizens are equal before the law and enjoy constitutional rights, protections and guarantees. Being an Irish citizen means that you are also a citizen of the European Union, with the right to live and to move freely within the EU. You can vote in local, national and European elections and have your say in all of the things that matter to you. So to all of our new citizens, my message to you is simple, to keep being uniquely you. Hold on to your identity, your culture and the traditions of your homeland. All we ask is that you share them with us. We will add them to the next chapter in the history of our great state and its wonderful people. And yes, we will be richer for it. Thank you, and Cavordis. Back to you, Neil. Thank you very much, Minister Brown. It's now time for us to hear from another one of our newest citizens. Lucina Edgar is originally from a small town in the Owl Mountain region of southwestern Poland. She left Poland at 19 to study law in Germany. And while studying, she also met her husband, who is Irish. She arrived in Ireland in the early 2000s, and her first impressions were of the beauty of the Irish landscape, and she also loved our music. Lucina now plays the harp and piano. Her, da her daughter, Hannah Lee, plays the fiddle. They're both involved with trad music in the community, and her daughter takes part in the Ulster Banger Fla. They travelled around together to various trad festivals. But here's Lucina to tell her own story. My name is Lucina Edgar and I came from Poland, from a small town in the southwest of Poland called Bielawa. I wanted to improve my German and uh, I moved to Germany and I stayed there for a few years until I came here to Northern Ireland. I came here because my husband wanted to come back home and I'm glad that I did because my life has changed for much better living here. Thankfully, my husband is an Irish citizen living up north here and therefore I had this opportunity to become an Irish citizen myself. And I am delighted that I did because I feel that we share this important bond as well of the citizenship. 
One of the things that uh, perhaps enriched my life through coming to Ireland was my further expansion of my music education. I discovered this whole new world of traditional music. In particular, I love slow airs and I love playing them on the harp. I love the feeling of the harp, I love the sound of the harp, and when I play the harp, I feel the closeness with the instrument, I feel maybe the, the, the natural wood, because you sort of hug it as you, as you play it. In particular, my daughter was playing the fiddle, and I wanted to play with her, and that's what we do now, we play together. I'm, I'm so proud to be Irish now, I'm, I feel so happy. You have no idea, it still hasn't sunk in. Being an Irish citizen uh, means the world to me. I am so happy to be the same as my husband, to share that. We share a lot of things. I feel fully incorporated, if you like, in the community. I don't feel any different. I have my experiences from Poland, but I feel very Irish. I feel part of it. Thanks for sharing that, Lucina. And now we have a real treat. When we heard Lucina enjoyed playing traditional Irish music, we asked if she would play us something today as part of today's celebration. I'm delighted to say she agreed. So here is Lucina playing with her daughter, Hanley. Lucina and Hanley, 
Thank you very much for that. I think everyone will agree, a wonderful performance. I would now like to introduce Mr. Justice Brian McMahon. Mr. Justice McMahon is a veteran of our citizenship ceremonies, and he will say a few words before leading you through the declaration, after which we will hear our national anthem. I do hope you sing along at home. Justice McMahon. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to be with you today to celebrate this important milestone in your lives and this most joyful occasion in the life of our country. Your presence today in such great diversity of origin is an affirmation of the essential values of our nation and the promise our state holds out to all our citizens, a promise of equality and diversity. My role here today is a little bit different to what normally happens in the non-COVID era uh, because you already have made your citizenship journey through the statutory declaration process and you have received your certificates of naturalization. But the making of the solemn pledges to declare your fidelity to the nation and loyalty to the state not only has an important legal effect, they also provide an important emotional connection to becoming an Irish citizen. So I'd like, like us to make these pledges together today and I will come back to that presently. Over the past two decades, Ireland has become an increasingly diverse country. It has undergone profound changes in the profile of, the, of its population over that period. Ireland has welcomed people, as the Minister for Justice has already said, from many different countries and from many different cultures. And as a nation, we have greatly benefited from this influx and this injection of external forces. As a country, we have been fortunate that we have not witnessed the events and actions that other states have experienced in recent years. We are all painfully aware of the terrible images of suffering which have resulted in intolerance, discrimination and disaffection in other parts of the world. It is therefore vitally important that we continue to keep integration to the fore in our minds. When you take up your new residences throughout the country, gently assert yourselves in your new community and you will be surprised what welcome you will find there. We too are a nation of immigrants, even though on this occasion we act as hosts. We, I can assure you throughout our history, recent history in particular, know the pains of immigration. We understand immigration and all the problems and the various tribulations that go with it. As citizens, you will share the legacy of our history and you will also share the same rights and responsibility as every other citizen of our country. This means, for example, that you may vote and decide who your councillors are going to be, who your representatives in parliament are going to be. And you may also, and I would encourage you to think of it, put yourself forward when you have found your feet to represent others. The highest office in the land is open to you. And with 
that goes a duty of all citizens to promote not just their own well-being or that of their family, but to promote a healthy social, cultural and economic life in their respective communities, in their towns, in their cities, and in their educational establishments and in the country itself. Needless to say, these pledges also call upon you to respect and uphold our laws and to be good citizens. I have lived all my life in this country for the most part, except for brief periods abroad. But after this ceremony and after the fact that you have received your new citizenship, you, as a new citizen in this country, have the same rights as I have. We have no half citizens in this country. We have no second class citizens. All citizens, you and I alike, have the same rights and responsibilities. So with these rights and duties, needless to say, you have to respect and uphold the laws of the country as well. As new citizens, you will contribute to the kind of creation of a new, inclusive and diverse society. When you make your declaration of fidelity to the state in a moment, we do not ask you to forget your old country, your own people and your own traditions or where you came from. Such memories are not contraband. Do not feel conflicted. There is no conflict between your old values, cultures, and our new values in this country. So bring with you your songs, your music, and above all, your stories, so that in bringing your culture and traditions and unique experiences to this country and joining them with ours, you redefine what it means to be Irish and you enrich the whole national tapestry. Your presence here helps to consolidate our membership of the global family of nations. And this makes Ireland a stronger and a better place for all our citizens. So, as you embrace the ways and values of your new country, you must never forget the cultural influences of your homelands. These things are precious to us, and they are things that people in faraway lands associate with our country. When the Irish people traveled and settled around the globe, as they do frequently and repeatedly. We bring with us the things that define us. And this love of home and tradition has been kept alive down through the generations in whatever land we settled. So maintaining these traditions has not diminished our presence or our participation or respect in and for the new communities where we settled. So I urge you to think likewise. And we certainly respect and embrace your new traditions, and we will see what we can learn from each other. We too, and don't forget this, we too have a rich culture. So I urge you to read our literature. Listen to our music. We have already seen an example of this tonight here in relation to the harp. And embrace our traditions. Play our games. As new citizens of our country, you have an opportunity to realize your ambitions and to achieve your dreams. And we will all be the better people for it. Granting of citizenship is a landmark event in the life of an individual 
and today's celebratory event is a testament to the importance that the state places on the granting of areas and citizenship to you. And so I offer you all my warmest congratulations on the commitment you have made. You have worked hard to attain our common citizenship and when you leave today, we must all work hard to sustain it. When I stand before a group of new citizens, as I have done for the last 11 years on these occasions, more often than not in the real world, where I look down at the amphitheater or the theater and I see a thousand faces. And it humbles me and it makes me wonder as I focus on one face here and one face there and another face here, what your backstories are, what country you came from, what was the circumstances of your leaving, who you left behind, what are your aspirations, what are your dreams? And I'm silenced by that prospect. Tonight, I cannot physically see you in front of me, but figuratively and in my imagination, I see into every living room that you live in. I see into your homes. I see you sitting with your friends, your partners, your wives, your husbands, your children. And I am amazed and uh, struck with great wonder and great hope and great feeling that you have chosen to select Ireland as your new home. I wish you well in that. I now come to the formal part of my role, which is to administer the declaration. And let me say how we do this. First of all, you have got with your paper the declaration. And I will say from the podium that first question, First, I will say, I, and that is the cue for you to say your name out loud. Say your name out loud where you are. Don't be muttering it or whispering it. Say it out loud. I'm not saying that the minister is looking into your bedroom or into your room. But we know you're there. And we want to hear the vibration that comes with your commitment. And after you have finished your name, I will pause and then I will say the word of. And that is your cue to give me your permanent address, the address you reside in in this country. You needn't give me your sister's address or your brother's address up in Glasnevin or your sister down in Mayo, your address. And when the longest address has been mentioned, I will pause again and we'll all fall silent and then we will move on to the declaration and I will read the declaration one line at a time and I will stop at the end of each line and I will listen for your repetition and say it loud. Are we ready? I hear you. Yes. Let us begin. I Say your name. Of. Speak your address. Okay. Having applied to the Minister for Justice. Repeat. For a certificate of naturalization. Hereby solemnly declare. My fidelity to the Irish nation and my loyalty to the state. I undertake to faithfully observe the laws of the state and to respect its democratic values. Thank you. Hohordukas, which means in the Irish language or first official language, congratulations and I wish you every happiness in your life in this country.
Ireland welcomes you and encourages you to contribute to your new country and to build a new nation. And on behalf of the Irish government, I formally welcome you and wish you the very best as you share in our country's future and your own happiness. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mr. Justice McMahon and the Garda Band. Our next contribution is from another of our new citizens, and indeed I've seen him pop up on the screen behind me a, a couple of times so far this evening, Zach Moradi. Zach is from Ramadi in Iraq. His family relocated to Carrick on Shannon in County Leitrim in 2002 when he was 11 years old. He's now 30. He first played competitive hurling at juvenile and underage levels with St Mary's Kiltart Club. He made his debut on the inter-county scene when he joined the, Le the Leitrim senior team in 2010. And here is Zach to tell us his story. Hi, my name is Zach Moraldi. I'm from Kurdistan of Iran, and now I'm a citizen of Ireland. My parents are uh, from Kurdistan of Iran. They left at uh, when the Iraq-Iran war uh, started in 1980 and I was born in a refugee camp. You're, you're in a camp, it's, it's really, it's, it's a prison you're in, you know, and, and you're in a dictatorship country as well. It's not your own country, so you're treated differently, you know. So we're kind of held as political prisoners. That's what it really was until we were relocated to Ireland, as came to Ireland as a programme refugee. I remember when we arrived, it was beautiful, it was green. And it was nice, and it was like, you could get proper sleep, you know, let's put it that way. But at the same time, the language, there was a massive barrier because we didn't speak, we didn't speak any English, you know. Like when you start a school, you're kind of on your own, you know, parents are like, there you go, you know, it's up to you, you pick it up easier, we're, we're too old, you know. And then getting involved in, in hurling and Gaelic in primary school, and that even made me English learning quicker and integrate quicker as well, and made so many friends that way. I would have been in primary school where the club coach, Clement Kniff, used to play hurling with Leitrim and now he's retired. And then Andy Stenson, he used to come in with the football, he's the chairman of the Leitrim County Board. He used to come in with the football and just kind of kicked in there, you know. But as I got a bit older, I just got more into the hurling and it was just, I kind of enjoyed hurling because it can bring a hurling a slit with you anywhere you go. Playing in Croft Park, winning the Lowry Maher in, uh, in 2019, I think that was the biggest achievement for Hurling and Leitrim, and it kind of put Leitrim on the map for Hurling. I encourage all the foreign nationals to, to play sports because it will, sports brings people together and unites, you know. It's not all about winning, it's all about, you know, sometimes it's all about making friends and getting to know people, you know, and the GA is good that way as well. So because it's amateur sport, it takes a bit of time and you have to be committed as well, you know. But it's a great organisation and it keeps, sports keeps everybody united and keeps everybody in their toes. To me, being an Irish citizen, it means everything because I'm here most of my life. I just, I just feel like I'm just Irish as I get. Everything else about me is really Irish. It's just my, how am I? look a bit different, a bit tanner than the rest of you. <laughs> but I feel, um, I feel uh, I've a Kurdish blood with an Irish heart.
Thanks to Zach for sharing his story with us. Now we have something a little bit different. These events are a celebration and we wanted to mark the occasion with a little more traditional Irish music. This is a tune called The Lonesome Boatman, performed for, for us by the Beer Mats. That was great, and our thanks to the lads in the beer mats. That's nearly it for this evening, um, but before we go, I'd like to thank all of our contributors this evening, uh, Minister Heather Humphreys, Minister James Brown, Mr. Justice McMahon, Lucina Edgar, Rasha al Kazmi, Zach Moradi, and I would like to thank the Croke Park events team for hosting us this evening and the amazing job that they've done, done supporting us. I want to thank the Garda Band for the wonderful music, as ever, and of course, Wilderness Ireland for the use of their beautiful imagery of Ireland. I'd also like to thank the staff of the Department of Justice, including the citizenship staff who work in Tipperary Town and my own transparency team here in Dublin for pulling this wonderful event together this evening. But most importantly, we'd like to thank all of you. Ireland really is proud to have you as citizens. Each one of you is one of us now, and we are all the richer for that. We have a traditional saying or Shanachal in Irish. Nilen Tinton, Martha Hinton Fe. 
This translates as, there's no fireplace like your own fireplace, and is equivalent to the English expression, there's no place like home. This is your home, and we hope that you feel that way about Ireland throughout the years and generations ahead of you. To close tonight, we have a selection of video messages that you've sent to us, telling us what it has meant to you to become a citizen of Ireland. Gurumila Mahagov, Ihoi, Agasarish, Kogarjikus, Ochri Liv. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of your night. Um, just wanted to express my happiness through this video and uh, to be considered now an ID citizen. Um, it's making me really happy. Um, I have achieved so much in Ireland. My kids are Irish, my dogs are Irish, and uh, having the honor now of being considered a citizen of this great nation, it just makes me extremely proud. And I just hope to keep continuing contributing to this country in any way I can. So, thank you so much. Hello, I am originally Russian, but becoming an Irish citizen means that now I am a part of my husband's culture and background. And it also means that two of our boys will have the best of both worlds. Slantia! They say to be Irish is to be lucky. And that's true. I came from Syria in 2015, and I settled down easily in the past six years. I worked in the best companies, bought a house, had a baby, and got real friends. It is all because of the people of Ireland who have shown the highest forms of compassion, empathy, and hospitality. It is rewarding to be naturalized, and it's a great gift to be Irish. My name is Arshad Mustafa, and I'm happy to be a part of the Irish community. I would like to thank the Minister of Justice for giving me an opportunity. I'll be contributing to the local community by volunteering in any social cause and be a law-abiding citizen. Thank you. My name is Prince Aleru and I moved to Ireland in 2014. One of my heartfelt desires was becoming in a black party. People here have a way of really welcoming you and making you feel like a part of the community. Today, I can both really be proud to say I'm Irish. Thanks and God bless. Dear Rich, thank God for the grace to be here today. I'm very honored and a dream come true. Thank you to the Irish government, Justice Department, the warm loving people of the Irish for making me part of this great heritage and culture. Go re mahagat, Jolim. Go re mahagat. This is destiny fulfilled. I'm grateful that Ireland has given me so much opportunities, and now I feel proud to become an Irish citizen. Go re ma a witch era. Now that I won't lose my Dutch citizenship, I'm very happy that I've become an Irish citizen. Having lived here happily for nearly 50 years, raising our family and being able to develop my work skills. I'm glad to become a member of the Irish society with equal rights, such as voting. Hello, my name is Ali Kaka. Uh, I actually have no enough words to describe my happiness of being an Irish. Uh, this means to me continue carrying this tradition of being caring, helpful, uh, and hospitable and live freedom. Ireland is my home. I'm so proud to be an Irish. Thank you, Ireland. Thank you, Irish government, for giving me the Irish citizen from the bottom of my heart. And thank you, Ireland and Irish people for everything. Thank you. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It can turn a stranger into a friend. I was a stranger, but now, I am part of the Irish community, which gives me great fulfillment. I just thank you very much. I've been waiting for this day. I see I need to thank you all of you. I already, I feel safe since I am here arrived 2009, July, and now more happy, more safe as well. I convinced my mom, no one stopped me because I'm Irish, brown Irish citizen. <laughs> thank you very much. The Irish people as they are amazing. They are always welcoming us. We have in, um, education access, everything already since we are arrived here. 
safe where to live, safe where, where to sleep. I always appreciate for this. Now more happy because I have my Irish citizen and I can visit my mom anytime. I didn't visit my mom. My mom is she's nine five year old, almost seventeen year with, with my kids. We didn't see my mom, but now we're going to travel all of us together with my kids. I'm so happy. I I, I, I wish you all the best, Irish people. Thank you very much, and the Minister of Justice as well. My name is Rakesh Dalwani. I'm honored and privileged to be a citizen of this country. I came from India in 2014 to Balana County, Mayo, and I was mesmerized by the love that people have shown to us, me and my family. As you can see, I'm into rugby now, and I'm a big supporter of Irish rugby team. Guhruma Agat, Ireland. Hello, I am so happy to have my Irish citizenship. Ireland is a wonderful place to live. It has beautiful scenery, lovely people, and a fantastic lifestyle. Gora Moy Agat. When I received my certificate, I was overwhelmed with joy. I thank God for the blessings I have received here. Ireland is a place where my human rights are valued. Being an Irish citizen means Finally being able to call the country home that has given me so much beauty, community, and a meaningful life. Proud to become an Irish citizen. This is my home. I will continue to be a proud, positive role model in the Irish community and continue to bring the positive attitude of Irishness throughout the globe on my travel. My name is Rahul, originally from India. I have traveled many countries and I wouldn't find any other country as beautiful as Ireland. And now I am an Irish citizen. I am forever grateful to the Irish hospitality. Hi, my name is DJ Daji Elogo. I'm so happy to be granted Irish citizen and God bless Highland. Thank you. I'm grateful for this achievement and really proud to be Irish. Hello everyone, my name is Aisha. I am humbled and grateful to become part of the Irish nation. And I congratulate all fellow naturalized Irish people today. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ari. I live in this country by last 21 years. I'm proud of joining Irish citizen. Hello Ireland, um, thank you for the opportunity to become a naturalized Irish citizen in your country and it means a lot to me because it opens a lot of opportunity not only here in Ireland but in the whole world and this is my new home, thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Asun Sien Chai. I have been in Ireland for 17 years. Ireland is my second hometown, I love here. I want to thank the Minister of Justice and all of my Irish friends. Thank you very much. Becoming an Irish citizen is like being a part of a big Irish family that actually knows how to have fun and... And it's fun to be in. Yeah, and... 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 and. I've been visiting West Kerry for over 20 years before finally making it my home. I've always felt connected and grounded here, so getting my Irish citizenship means the world to me. I feel I truly belong. Is Erinach May Garamila Mahagat. Hello everyone. Being Irish citizen is a wonderful thing for me. I'm really grateful being Irish citizen. I would like to thank Minister of Justice as well as Irish government. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm proud to be Irish and uh, I really like the Ireland and uh, I'm really happy to be Irish citizen now. And I, I just like Irish culture and I'm really happy with getting Irish citizen now and um, thank you very much. Hi all, um, to become an Irish citizen, uh, it means to me more alarm uh, um, and more loyalty for this country and do something better for this country and the people of Republic of Ireland. Thanks. Thank you so much for making me our citizen of Ireland.